Welcome to the Cava Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Oakland Raiders 2019 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And if you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. Now, of all that all the way, let's get to the first pick of the draft for them. Of course, in Cleveland Farrell, uh, edge uh, slash, uh, you know, pass rusher out of Clemson. When you look at his production data, 75.85 in terms of, of uh, solo tackle data, 64.38 in terms of sack data, and 66.73 in terms of tackle for loss data. Doesn't hit all the all-pro thresholds, but does hit all the Pro Bowl thresholds based on his production data. And when, you, and when you look at his overall data, he is closer to like the Pro Bowl averages than he is the all-pro averages. Um, the only issue with Cleveland Farrell is there's no athleticism testing whatsoever. He didn't do anything at the pro day. He didn't do much of anything at the combine. And there really isn't much of a profile on him. Uh, it also is a little concerning because you took him four overall when you had multiple edge rushers in this class. You had Brian Burns. You had Montez Sweat. You had, uh, of course, uh, Josh Allen. Uh, all those players had really great athleticism traits on paper. You know, like they prove that they have very good athleticism traits, and they also have the production to match those traits as well. Uh, so it was very surprising to see a guy like this drafted that high compared to all the other edge rushers in the class. So it, this isn't to say that Cleveland Farrell is going to be a bust. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is you had the opportunity to take a player who is much better, and you decided to take a player who's just kind of solid over those players. So we'll see what happens long term with Cleveland and Farrell. I mean, he could end up becoming the best edge rusher out of the group because anything is definitely possible. However, there was a lot of really great edge rushers in this class, and they ended up taking someone who is like the fifth to sixth best edge rusher compared to some of the guys that are more in the top five best of the class. And that's the only issue that I think this pick really raises with the Oakland Raiders is just from that kind of perspective. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the next pick, which, of course, is Josh Jacobs running back out of Alabama. When you look at his market share production score, he had 11.07 out of 100. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, pro bowl threshold, or starter threshold uh, in terms of the averages at the position. And when you look at the actual threshold, doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, five-time pro bowl threshold, or three-time pro bowl threshold based on his overall data. There have been very, very few long-term starting running backs with as low of a market share production score as Joshua Jacobs. On top of that, his athleticism traits are not that great either. 53.30 um, in terms of explosiveness, 45.66 in terms of speed, and uh, no flexibility testing whatsoever. Uh, all that I know is this. There's never been a, a significant long-term starting running back to hit a 11.07 out of 100 in terms of their market share production score since 1958. Uh, actually, 1969. But since 1969, there's never been a significant running back starter to hit 11.07 in terms of their market share production score, nor has there been a multiple all-pro or multiple Pro Bowl running back to have less than a 79 or higher athleticism trait. And Joshua Jacobs does not have any 79 or higher athleticism trait. So not only is Josh Jacobs not very athletic based on paper, but he's also not very productive based on paper. And as much as people want to say Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara, Alvin Kamara had a 79 or higher athleticism trait. Alvin Kamara had all pro and pro bowl athleticism traits. He didn't have the production, but he at least had the athleticism traits. So Josh Jacobs doesn't have either one of those things. He's just not a very productive back. And if that's all you have is that he's just not a very productive back, then I don't understand how you draft a guy like that late first round. I just don't see the logic here. So Again, this is another pick. We'll see what happens with him. Um, the biggest advantage Joshua Jacobs has is that he's on the Oakland Raiders who do not have a lot of really great running back prospects on that roster. You know, there, there's no Le'Veon Bell there. There's no uh, Todd Gurley there. Like, there, there's not a whole lot of competition to beat out there. So maybe Josh Jacobs wins in that type of competition. But if he was to go to any other team with an already established back, it would not be a great result. So we'll see what happens with him. But this is another pick that just based on the overall data, this is probably one of the worst picks, honestly. Just based on the overall data, it just doesn't really hit or doesn't really show much of anything on paper for Joshua Jacobs. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft, which, of course, is Jonathan a uh, John Ethan Abram out of uh, Mississippi State. When you look at his uh, production data, 93.64 in terms of uh, solo tackle data, 53.87 in terms of interception data, and 61.13 in terms of pass collection data. Doesn't hit the all-pro threshold, does hit all the Pro Bowl thresholds based on his overall uh, production data. 
And when you look at the averages, his averages are closer to like the starter and Pro Bowl averages and the All Pro averages. So he definitely has good production traits. And when you look at athleticism, 35.22 in terms of explosion and 91.10 in terms of speed. Doesn't really do any flexibility testing to really determine that, but definitely has the traits necessary to be at least a long-term starter based on his athleticism traits. So I would say that's the best case scenario with Jonathan Abraham, or Abram, excuse me, is that he can become a long-term starting safety, but he's definitely someone that based on his athleticism traits, he fits more as a free safety type than a strong safety type uh, based on his, because of his, his uh, explosion testing is so poor. Um, so we'll see what happens to him as well, but the first round for the Raiders, it's just not that great. Cleveland Farrell could end up becoming a very good starting edge rusher, but he's not the best edge rusher in this class based on paper. Joshua Jacobs is hit or miss, honestly. Most likely miss based on his production and his athleticism traits. And then Jonathan Abram, Abram has good production traits, but just doesn't have all the athleticism traits you're looking for at the position. So three picks that the Raiders took, and it's going to be very questionable to see what happens in the future. I hope they all end up being very good, but based on data, they could at the very least just might not end up just being starters, at least in Josh, Joshua Jacobs' case, if he becomes a starter, that would be, he'd be a significant outlier based on that. Then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft in Trayvon Mullen. In terms of uh, his uh, production data, he had a 12.97 solo tackle score and a 10.84 pass deflection score. Doesn't hit the all-pro Pro Bowl thresholds in terms of uh, solo tackle data or pass deflection data and when you look at the averages woefully below what those averages are uh, in terms of his production data and when you look at athleticism traits 50 in terms of explosion and 67.87 in terms of speed he has uh, pro bowl athleticism traits didn't do any flexibility testing to really determine much about him but does at least have you know pro bowl explosion and speed traits but just doesn't have the production to really say much about him so overall another pick that i just don't really see panning out um, he could end up becoming a long-term starter, which he would be a massive, massive outlier if he was to, you know, become a long-term starter. Um, but other than that, just doesn't have all the traits you're looking for based on paper. Uh, and then, of course, we get to the next pick of the draft with Max Crosby out of uh, Eastern Michigan. When you look at his production data, 72.11 in terms of solo tackle data, 90.12 in terms of sack data, and 97.87 in terms of flex, uh, tech floss data. Uh, hits all the sort of uh, Pro Bowl thresholds you're looking for and definitely hits the all pro thresholds in terms of his sack data and TFL data So all those marks are really really good uh, And when you look at athleticism traits 69.65 in terms of explosion 73.74 in terms of speed and 95.14 in terms of flexibility for his size Based on his testing. He's kind of like Nick Bosa Athleticism wise, but just didn't play at Ohio State So this is actually one of the better picks the Raiders took in this in this draft class you know, someone that I think will definitely have to fight on the, you know, because since he's a lower pick, you know, he's going to have to fight to, like, make a name for himself on the roster, but could end up becoming a very, very good starter for them. You know, you basically got a Nick Bosa-level athlete at a fraction of the cost uh, it, overall. So I'm not saying he's as good as Nick Bosa. I'm just saying that he's a similar, very, very similar athlete and was also pretty productive at his level of competition. So good things are definitely in the works for Max Crosby, I would say, at, at the very least. Uh, and then, of course, we get to Isaiah Johnson, cornerback out of Houston. Uh, when you look at his production data, 73.90 in terms of solo tackle data, 22.97 in terms of pass deflection data. Uh, when you look at the averages of the position, uh, he pretty much hits the solo tackle averages for Pro Bowl potential. Uh, pass deflection-wise, he doesn't quite hit all the areas that you're looking for in terms of all pro Pro Bowl potential based on his pass deflection data. But he could end up becoming an outlier, you know, because of his solo tackle data. And when you look at athleticism traits, 94.33 in terms of uh, explosion, 93.80 in terms of speed, and a very high 90 percentile in terms of uh, flexibility for his size, has all pro level athleticism traits with good production, but not great production. I think that at the very least, Isaiah Johnson could become a long-term starter or better. I mean, there definitely is some Pro Bowl potential with him, but I would, I would steer towards a starter more so than a Pro Bowl, or at least initially based on his overall data profile and then of course we get to Foster Moreau tied in out of uh, LSU when you look at his production data 39.17 in terms of market share production doesn't hit the all pro threshold does hit above the pro bowl threshold and when you look at the averages nowhere near the average all pro score or pro bowl score or starter score but has really great athleticism traits 88.93 in terms of explosion 84.82 in terms of speed and 90.09 in terms of uh, flexibility for his size 
Uh, all of his marks pretty much hit all the all pro slash pro ball thresholds at the position. When you look at the averages, the only average he doesn't really hit is the speed average. You know, the average speed score for all pro slash pro ball tight end is 89.53. So he doesn't hit that, but definitely hits within the starter averages. And I would say that's the best case scenario for Foster Moreau. I would say he has a good chance of becoming a long term starter at the tight end position but also has a chance to become an all-pro slash pro bowl tight end as well if he you know really develops and gets used properly so he could be like a jimmy graham like guy potentially not going to be as good as jimmy graham of course because jimmy graham is just a freak in all levels but he foster moreau is definitely one of the freakiest tight ends in this class based on his athleticism traits so there's definitely a good chance he can become successful and of course we get to hunter renfro Wide receiver out of Clemson. When you look at his uh, production data, 29.01 in terms of passing yards, market share production. Doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter area in terms of his market share data. And, of course, when you look at the averages, nowhere near the All-Pro average, Pro Bowl average, or starter average. And when you look at athleticism traits, 23.38 in terms of uh, explosion, 16.25 in terms of speed, and 51.75 in terms of flexibility for his size. Does not hit 154 or higher athleticism trait. And the vast majority of multiple All-Pro and Pro Bowl wide receivers had at least 154 or higher athleticism trait. And when you look at the averages, nowhere near the averages in terms of All-Pro potential, Pro Bowl potential, or starter potential based on the averages at those positions. So Renfro is just not very athletic, not very productive, could end up becoming sort of a complementary wide receiver, which is what he was at Clemson. But anything more than that would definitely be very surprising based on his overall data. And of course, we get to Quentin Bell, uh, a edge rusher, probably one of the one of the more surprising picks for them very good athleticism traits though 93.30 in terms of explosiveness 85.65 in terms of speed and 54.08 in terms of flexibility for his size does not have the flexibility traits of a all pro or pro bowl edge rusher but does hit all the areas in terms of starter potential um, don't, don't really have a lot of production data to really say much about him at the moment because most of it was at a lower level competition but he's definitely a very very good athlete and i am very excited to see what exactly happens with him so you know, good explosion and speed traits, doesn't have great flexibility traits, but could end up becoming something. So he's a bit of a mystery box, but because he's a late pick, I won't be that harsh about it. Uh, so overall, when you look at the Oakland Raiders draft class, I would say this is a mixed bag of players. I think there are players like Cleveland Farrell can become a long-term starter. I think John Jonathan Abram can be that. Max Crosby, Isaiah Johnson, Foster Moreau. All those guys, I think, have a good shot at least becoming long-term starters for the Oakland Raiders. But every other pick is questionable at best. And there's not one single pick in this draft who checks all the boxes from a metrical standpoint, from a data perspective, who checks all the boxes. And, and when I say checks all the boxes, I'm talking about guys like J.J. Watt. I'm talking about guys like Emmett Smith. I'm talking about guys like there's a multitude of, of just really great players who check all these boxes based on data and none of the players the Raiders pick check all the boxes so this is going to be interesting I think there's going to be some starters from this class but at the very end but but at bottom line I do think they could have had a much better draft I think they could have made a much better picks and I'm gonna be very excited to see what happens with these picks because it's it's just one of those drafts where it could be good it could be great it could be terrible Potentially. So, we'll see what happens. Um, let me know in the comment section below, you know, how you felt the Oakland Raiders did. Uh, if you have the sense of, who is this guy talking about the Oakland Raiders? I've done draft class predictions on previous Raider drafts. I have videos out there. I got a lot of flack based on those videos. But if you actually go back and revisit those videos, I was pretty much right about every single pick the Raiders took. So, uh, you know, the data is, is what's telling me this information. If you don't like the data, that's fine. But the data is just facts. If you don't like facts, you don't have to like it. But it's still facts. So, um, you know, thank you very much. And I'll be talking to you guys in the next video. And if you want to know more, please leave a like and subscribe. Share it if you want more content as well. Uh, also, if you want to become a super fan, check out my Patreon page. Uh, link is in the description if you want to become a super fan and get more information about different players in the draft. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.